Well, my name is Pearl, Pearl Bayliss, and I'm a member of the Norwich, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Norwich Old Meeting House Congregational Church. I feel recently that none of us are really praying enough. I really feel that God has got so much to give us, but we're not asking. And it's there for us if we ask. I've just taken a couple of paragraphs from a book that I've been reading, um, <laughs> entitled Pray, strange enough title. So I'd like to read that first as we start. Prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God for those things agreeable to his will. In the name of Christ, with confession of our sins and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. Now, prayer in the minds of some people is only for emergencies, danger, danger threatens, sickness comes, things are lacking, difficulties arise, and then maybe they pray. I've had a, a bit of a laugh with a, a friend of mine who has been suffering a lot with headaches with this heaviness of the weather. Oh, she says, I've been taking paracetamol. It still doesn't go. I said, have you thought about praying? Well, no. So she prayed and within hours, the headache was lifted. Now that's not just my friend, we all do it. We all go to medication sometimes before we, oh, perhaps we should pray. Number one, prayer should be number one. Now, prayer is, however, much more than merely asking God for something, although that is a very valuable part of prayer, if only because that it reminds us of utter dependence upon God. It is also communion with God and talking with God. We get to know people, don't we, by talking to them. So we're going to get to know God more if we spend more time talking to him. Do you think that any one of us spends enough time in pondering over and marvelling over God's exceedingly great glory. And do you suppose that any one of us has grasped the full meaning of grace? Aren't our prayers often ineffective and powerless and sometimes even prayerless? Why? Maybe because we rush unthinkingly and unprepared. Now, as we come into God's presence, often without realising the majesty, the glory of God whom we are approaching and without reflecting upon the exceedingly great riches of his glory in our Christ Jesus. Do we hope to draw upon if we're rushing into things and not thinking who we're speaking to, I feel we must think magnificently of God. If you have no time for prayer or no chance of secret prayer, why not tell him? Just tell him all about it and you will discover you're already praying. It's difficult sometimes when you've got a young family to spend time in prayer. I had three young children and I did find that very difficult. But there were times when I could say when they went to bed. I had that time. I couldn't say like a lot of people do, oh, get up early in the morning. Because if I got up early in the morning, lo and behold, they would as well. Now I'm blessed because I have lots of time that I can spend with Jesus. 
Now, to, to, to those of us who find it difficult to get any quiet time or are unable to pop into a church for a few moments, let us remember the wonderful prayer life of Paul. Did it ever occur to you that he was in prison and he was chained to this Roman soldier? He wrote so many prayers that we possess in the Bible. You know, he was never alone. He always had a Roman soldier day and night by his side. But he prayed. In Ephesians 3, 14 to 21, I'd like to read. <clears throat> and Paul wrote these words. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through the Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long, high and deep is the love <coughs> of Christ. Amen. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I felt very touched when I read that and still had the picture um, this, is, this is a bit advertising here because I'm on YouTube, but I have been watching, listening to Lectio Divina, and I have learned so much from that. And you know, as they say, when people talk to you, especially scriptures, your mind imagines that picture. We all might have different pictures, but basically it will be very similar. And so you automatically become in that story. And I could see Paul, very dark and smelly old cell, damp, really horrible, with this Roman soldier there, probably couldn't care less. He's chained, Paul is, you know, and he's chained to this Roman soldier. But he managed to get the peace to be able to write something like I've just read. How wonderful is that? And in our own lives, how wonderful it would be if when absolutely turmoil is going on around us, that we could come into that place of peace and spend time praying to our Lord. We can do it. It is possible. As John 14, 13, 14 says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that my Father will be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything and I will do it. If you believe, you will receive. So why don't we pray more? Is it because we don't really think God will do it? Is it because we're fed up, keep praying and praying the same prayer? As we've already said earlier in service, you know, it's God's timing, not our timing. And I do suffer with patience sometimes. You know, I, I pray for patience. I get impatient. But it is in God's timing. He has promised quite a few times in the Bible Whatever you ask for, I will give you in his timing. 
Because we are born sinners in Psalm 51.5, we naturally want to please ourselves rather than God. When we sin in any way, we must ask God to cleanse us from within. Now, godly conduct, conduct can only come from a clean heart and spirit. So let us ask God to create a clean heart and spirit in us. You know, although we are praying and asking God for things, and maybe we don't get answered prayer, the fault is probably with us. We need to make sure that we are clean inside. Do we realise there is nothing the devil dreads as much as when we pray? His great concern is to keep us from praying. He loves to see us busy, 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 running around, not giving ourselves time to pray and spending time with Jesus. Being the age that I am, I'm blessed. When I was working, yes, I was rushing around, rushing around, and by the time I wanted to spend time with Jesus, I'd sit down probably go to sleep. We have to find a way round that. Let's get up early in the morning and spend time. We need to spend time. It's so important to spend time with Jesus. When I, when I spoke to John and I said that I would entitle it Pray, John came back and he said, you could, only a thought, you could Put hands together, close your eyes. I said, I don't think I could do that. And I laughed. Because, as many of you hear, I pray all the time without even realising it. And if I'm driving and I put my hands together and close my eyes, I think I'm saying, Lord, help me. You know, <laughs> we have to be sensible. But there are situations that we find ourselves in that we can pray for. I had a meeting a few, few days ago, and somebody said to me, well, we're not going to preach, are we? We're not going to keep talking about Jesus. I said, no, it'll be fine. But you know, straight away, you start talking about Jesus. You can't help it. If Jesus is in you, you just, I can't just button it up. I, because everything around us is Jesus. If we're paying for a meal, who gave us the money? Jesus did. Who prepared that food? The people who Jesus has put in the back to cook for us. You cannot have a... Con if you're a Christian, you cannot be up and not talk about Jesus. Now, the greatest things we can do for God or man is pray. You're going to hear that word pray a lot while I'm speaking. We can accomplish far more our prayers than by our work. We all know how to pray, but perhaps we should cry out as the disciples did of old. Lord, teach us to pray. Has any one of you here shouted to God because you felt you weren't getting the answers? Have ever you cried out to God? I have. A few weeks ago, my son had promised that he would do a gig in a, a little complex, somebody's birthday. And when it came to the, because he suffered with anxiety, by the time it came to the time of him getting ready to go, he says, oh, I don't think I can go. My heart's going, I don't feel very well. The enemy was sitting here telling him all these things. I said, but you've got to go, you've promised, but I'm going to be ill. I, I was angry. I was angry at him, but I was angry at God. And I go upstairs to change, to get ready. And I actually shouted, Lord, you promised me you would give my son courage to be able to do this. And I came down. And there was my son, 
sitting cross-legged on the carpet. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm putting the leads in the bag, ready to go. I've got to go. I said, yes, you have. And praise God, the enemy again was defeated in the name of Jesus. And he did the gig and it went really, really well, which then gave him more encouragement. He knew he could do it. Now in John 14, 12, 14, could any words be plainer or clearer than these? Could any promise be greater? Has anyone else, anywhere, at any time, ever offered so much when God's promised whatever we ask for, he'll give it to us? I wonder how the disciples felt. Surely they could hardly believe in what they were hearing, but that promise wasn't just made to them. It's made to us all, to you and me. And Jesus repeats himself a few moments, um, several times in the Bible, and go into John 15, 7, 8. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. He urges his disciples to obey his commands. He tells them that one sign of them being his friend will be obedience. Be obedience to his <coughs> commands in all things. John 15, 14. Then once more, he repeats his wishes. In John 15, 16, because Jesus Christ is our Lord and Master, he has the right to call us servants. But instead, he calls us friends. Friends. We all have friends. Some friends mean more to us than others. I had a friend, I've still got that person, but went through a really tough time with her the past week. This person was supposed to meet up with me on a certain day and she didn't turn up. The week went by she was supposed to be seen at another meeting, and she didn't turn up. On the Friday, quite a lot of people were ringing her to find there was no answer. I didn't realise why my phone was behaving the way it did. It rang once and then went engaged to me. I then realised that I'd been blocked. Why? I don't know. I was concerned, I prayed, I was concerned, so I felt I should go round and visit. And the enemy was there at the door, waiting for me. You press the bell, it won't work. I came away, I went again, pressed the bell, I'll press next door. Didn't work. Praying, this gentleman from walking past, knocking on the door. Do you know this certain person? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come in. I'll take you there. Thank you. Took me up. Rang the bell. No answer. Enemy didn't want me to meet this person. Bang, bang, bang on the door. Just like a police call when they bang on the door. The door opened. Bless her, there she was, safe, well, invited me in. I said, what's happened? Are you okay? We're all worried about you. Are you all right? Yeah. Did you block me? I had somebody block you. Okay. I couldn't understand what was going on. 
I couldn't get to the bottom of it at that particular time. But all it was said is, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Okay. I was so shocked by it, I didn't even ask why. I was just, okay. So I got up to leave. Now Jesus will never block us. Never. Even if we misbehave and we sin and we mess up. He will never ever block us. He's always there for us. But I left without even asking why. I went home. I shared with my son. And I got to bed and I prayed. And I just left it with God. I had to go out the next day. And when I came back, there was a note through my letterbox. And it said, I am so sorry. I do want to be your friend. Please come round and see me. Now that's God. But the bang, bang and the no answer to the bell was not God. How the enemy and God. Both ways, you can see. But we know who is more powerful. I did go round in the evening. And I managed to ask the reason why. Now this is, this is really terrible, really, in a way. But a certain person had seen this friend of mine and tapped her on the shoulder and said, let's have coffee. Oh yes, you want a friend, you want true friends, don't you? You want to get rid of Pearl? She's not a Christian, she's a hypocrite. You want to get rid of her, block her. Well, this particular person didn't know how to do it. Oh, I'll do it for you. Blocked it. Plus other friends as well. Now that's absolutely terrible for somebody to do something like that. But the whole point of me sharing this testimony is God never blocks you. He will never block you. God is always there for you. Yes, we do have the enemy. He will try his utmost to try and upset things. But the wonderful thing that after speaking to this person, I couldn't sleep that night, they said. I couldn't sleep. I had to get out of bed. And I laid on the floor in the lounge because I was tossing and turning. God was speaking to that person. You need to get it sorted. What you've been told isn't from me, it's from the enemy. And it happens. But praise God, that person listened to the calling of God and came and posted a letter. So, you know, we all say all oh, the enemy, but enemy does attack, beware. Especially when things are happening. I mean, I was preparing this for the past couple of weeks but this week I've been more into it and I've been hit like this all the time. We spoke about my son. You know, and it's been a struggle. But as John <laughs> reminded me, if you're going something good, you can rest assured. The enemy will try and stop you from doing it. Praise God, so you've got a blessing. How comforting then to know that God chooses us. He not only chooses us, but he wants us to be his friend. Because he is our Lord and Master, we owe him obedience and we should listen to everything he says because we are his. We should love him and others the way he loves us. My family often on my phone will say, love you, Ma, love you, Mum. And you know, he's my father and often I'll drive along and I say, I love you, Lord. And it's something that has come from a family, but I do love my God and I know you all do as well. But you know, sometimes he likes to hear us say that as well. The promise that Jesus made commands us to ask whatsoever 
we will. And this is the greatest promise ever made to man. Yet, most Christian people practically ignore it. He reminds us that our very joy depends upon answered prayer. And yet we allow the devil to persuade us to neglect prayer. He makes us believe we can do more of our own efforts than by our own prayers. And we've all experienced that. By our conversations with man or with men, than by our intercessions with God. God delight to answer prayer and he has given us his word. He will answer prayer. Now, we need to check ourselves. Do we spend at least, at least 10 minutes a day in prayer? Do we consider it important enough for that 10 minutes a day in prayer? You know, when the kingdom of heaven can just be asked, can be had just for the asking, 10 minutes seems a short time to spend with God, doesn't it? Is it prayer when we just say our prayers or are just repeating a daily, a few phrases which have become meaningless while our thoughts are wandering hither and thither? You know, 10 minutes really isn't a long time. And to be quite honest with you, it will take me a few minutes to get focused completely on God because my mind will everywhere. Either the mobile phone will go off or the dog will bark, there's someone at the door. You need to come into that place. And don't time yourself. Pray. We don't need to look at the watch. Oh, 10 minutes. That's not what they're saying. We may work for Christ morning till night. We may do Bible studies. We may be faithful in our preaching and individuals' dealings. We cannot be effective in any of these things unless we spend time in prayer. Much secret prayer means much public power. God's great storehouse is full of blessings. Only prayer can unlock that storehouse. And prayer is the key. And faith turns the key. And the door is opened. And we then can claim the blessings. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And to see him is to pray. But I've prayed and my prayers have not been answered. We hear that a lot from people. Failure in prayer is due to fault in our heart. Only then, pure in heart, can see God. And only those who call on the Lord with a pure heart can confidently claim answers to their prayers, 2 Timothy 22. If we ask and God does not give them, the fault is with us, not with God. Every unanswered prayer is a call to search the heart, to see what is wrong there. Why are these prayers not being answered? For the promise is clear, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 14. Most of you, I think, will know this piece of poetry, but we've been talking about storehouse, came up a little while ago, so I'm going to read this one. 
God has a storehouse filled to the brim for all those who believe and trust in him. There's an endless supply of mercy and grace awaiting those who by faith his eternal love embrace. God has a storehouse. He wants to provide all things that are good will not be denied. It's full of forgiveness, hope, peace and rest with the riches and glory in Jesus the blessed. God has a storehouse. He wants for you to share so other people's burdens you too may help to bear. Amen. Amen.